I'm Chelsea. Today's project is a little different. I'm over at my parents' house, and as you can see, they're in the middle of updating their outdoor entertainment space with this great new kitchen. I've already helped with a few projects, like installing the sink and creating the concrete countertops. But since they'll be doing some entertainment at night, we thought we would uh, create something that would match the countertops with some pendant lights above the bar. And Catherine, who designed the space, is going to help me out. So you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. For this project, we're going to need one bag of Quickrete sand topping mix, a mixing bucket, a pendant cord kit, a throwaway mixing spoon, a large can, a drill driver with a pilot bit and a Phillips bit, a razor knife, a pair of scissors, some cooking spray, two and a half inch screws, a permanent marker, a power sander or a mallet, coarse grit sandpaper, eye protection, waterproof gloves, a light bulb, and two soda bottles. We're using a two liter and a one and a quarter liter. All right, Catherine, I hope you're thirsty because we have to empty these bottles before we can get started with our project. Okay. Do you want red soda or cola? I'll go with cola. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's still fizzy, it's not flat yet. Nope. <laughs> Cheers to a hopefully successful project. <laughs> and now that we're getting all caffeined up, we're ready to start this project. Our first step is to remove these labels. My bottle is smaller than your bottle. Mm -hmm. So does that mean it's going to go inside of yours? Exactly. The mold? We'll attach them together and pour the concrete in between them. Okay. And that'll be the shape of our pendant lights. Okay, very cool. And once we've got the labels removed, we rinse these bottles out. When our pendant's done, we want it to be maybe this long. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut the bottle a little bit longer than that to give us some room to work with. And this brand of bottle actually has a line right where we need to cut. So, cheat sheet for us. Yeah, so I'll just puncture it with the utility knife and then we'll cut it with scissors. Okay. The smaller bottle doesn't need to be cut, just this one. So Chelsea, does it matter how even this cut is? No, that's the nice thing about it is that the concrete's gonna be a little bit lower than that. And okay. Since it's a liquid, it'll level itself. Cool. Before we attach the bottles together, why don't you take the cooking spray and spray the outside of our inside bottle. Okay. And that way, when we're, the concrete's cured, it'll be a little easier to take it out. Okay. So, I'm gonna spray away from okay, you. Okay, thank so you. Spray I you with cooking it. spray. <laughs> Good thing I know how to cook and DIY. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we place a larger bottle on a smaller one, giving us an idea of what this concrete mold will look like. When screwing into slick surfaces like plastic, drilling pilot holes first can make things go much easier. Okay, so we're just gonna drill a little pilot hole through the center of the cap? Right, go through okay. both caps. Both caps, okay. I'm sure you know plastic is so slippery that you need a pilot uh, hole. <laughs> yeah, to get the screw to grip. Next, we attach the two lids of our soda bottles together with a two and a half inch screw. Going in. All right, so we're just gonna drill three pilot holes and attach three screws to stabilize the center bottle. Okay, so it's an even thickness all yeah, the way around. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense. The screws are gonna be obviously above the concrete, right? Exactly, okay. yes. Yeah, this one might be a little, yeah, that one might be a little wide. Okay. This part can be a little tricky, but it's important to get it just right so that the spacing between each bottle is even all the way around. Hey Catherine, I know the island that the pendants are going over isn't very big. Is there a reason that we're doing three pendants instead of two? Yeah, so underneath that bar top mm -hmm. there, there's three corbels underneath, right. and so we're kind of going to match oh, the corbels neat. above. Okay, perfect. All right, well, let's mark them to make sure all three of them are even. Yeah, definitely we want to make sure, because if we see them from afar and they're uneven uh. hanging up there, that would be terrible. <laughs> Mom doesn't want the lights to be too big since mm -hmm. there are going to be three of them. Right. But you also don't want them to be so short that the light bulb is hanging out yeah. of them <laughs> and distracting from the fixture itself. Right. So maybe if we line it up with the bottle cap and nine and a quarter seems to be yeah, right, right about here, maybe. Screw. Yeah. I think that'd be yeah, good size. I think that's a good size. One thing to consider while deciding on the length of your pendant, the concrete will shrink from this mark while it dries. So you may want to add about half an inch. Our first mold is now ready for concrete. We're using a sand topping mix, which is a blend of Portland cement and sand. This is typically used for thin concrete patches, but this mix is also perfect for cast concrete projects like the one we're working on because it's a very fine mixture that doesn't have rocks, so it'll give us a smooth, finished result. All right, so now we just have to mix it up and get the right consistency of water to concrete mix. So how will we know it's the right consistency? Well, you don't want it to be too watery, 
and then you don't want it to be too thick. So okay. as long as the three fixtures are the same mix, because it can affect the color of the cured concrete, right, once it's depending all on how much water is used in the mix. Yeah, so just as long as you're consistent right. with all of them. Yeah, and since it's so fine, it'll give it a nice smooth finish once it's cured. Oh yeah, that'll be perfect. We're looking for a consistency a little thicker than pancake batter. If you can turn your spoon sideways like this, and the concrete still holds on, that's a pretty good mix. Yeah, that looks perfect. Now we're ready to fill the mold. If you wait too long, it can begin to set up and become hard to work with, so it's best to start working with it right away. That's also why we only mixed up enough concrete for one pendant at a time. It's always fun to work with someone else that knows their way around the tool belt. In addition to being a fellow DIYer, Catherine is also an exterior designer. She's been working with my mom for the past couple of months on my parents' backyard project. I want to know how much input my parents actually let you have on the design <laughs> at their house, because I know they are both pretty stubborn. Well, your dad and your mom have their opinions, <laughs> but I'm pretty opinionated too. An outdoor kitchen is, it's a personal thing, you know? Yeah. You know how you use your own kitchen at home, and so it's helpful for me to know what the, exactly what they'll be using it for. Yeah. And, how much they use it and what they want to keep out there and everything. So I can't always design it all on my own. I have to know how they'll use the space yeah. so that it's very helpful for me. Once we've reached the bottle marks, we set the mold in a sturdy can and level it out. So does it look level from your angle? Yeah, it looks, looks good. Okay, it looks straight up and down from here. So our last step is just to get the bubbles out. All right, let's do it. Have you ever used a sander? Of course I've used a sander. <laughs> to, to vibrate the bubble. No, I have out. not. <laughs> so we don't have any sandpaper on it, but we're just gonna tap it while it's on and I'll just get the bubbles to come right out. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Do I lay it on top first and then turn it no, on? No, turn it on. Turn it on and then lay it on top? Yeah. Alright. That's pretty cool. This process basically helps displace the water with the weight of the concrete. It forces the concrete towards the bottom of the mold, which will result in fewer pock marks or holes in the finished concrete. Yeah, you could see they stopped, or they slowed down and yeah. how fast they were coming up. So I, yeah. think, I think that was long enough. That looks good. That's pretty cool. And so by doing that, we'll end up with a smoother finish. A lot smoother, yeah. yeah. So now we just have to wait 20 hours. <laughs> Till tomorrow. That's why we have our coffee cans. You all don't right. have to stand here and hold it all night. <laughs> After allowing the concrete to dry overnight, we're ready to remove the plastic mold. I think it's ready. Yep, yeah, it's good. Earlier when I said the concrete would shrink about half an inch, now you can see what I meant. Using a razor knife, cut the mold a little bit at a time. This part can be a little time consuming, but it's best to work safe and not rush it. After removing the plastic, we're smoothing out the rough edges with sandpaper. With all three pendants complete, we're ready to head back to my parents' house to install these bad boys. You wanted to center on these corbels? Right, yeah. So 18 inches. From center. From center. Okay. The middle pendant will be right in the middle, okay. and then 18 inches on either side. On either side. Center this way too. Right, and they have to be centered on the countertop as well. So the countertop is 18 inches. So okay. 18 divided by two is nine. <laughs> so nine. So nine inches <laughs> right in the center. Okay. We're wiring these fixtures into the home's electrical system, but you can also buy pendant kits that plug into the wall. If you're not experienced with electrical work, this is where it'd be smart to bring in a professional. I really love how these pendant lights turned out. They really incorporate well with the design of the concrete countertops. I agree, and I can't wait to see what else you have planned for this whole space. Yeah, just a few more weeks and we'll be able to see how it all comes together. Awesome, can't <laughs> wait. I have so many ideas for upcoming projects. Follow along on Facebook so you don't miss out.